أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم brothers and sisters welcome to Sophia TV's live show tonight in this blessed month this great Adheem month of Muharram we'll be where we'll be exploring the great tragedy as it were of Imam Hussein alayhi salam the holy Ahl Bayt and his companions um, with me tonight we have a special guest where we'll be exploring um, the main concept, as it were, or the subject matter of the uprising of Imam Hussein al-Islam and the message for youth. With me tonight, we have Sheikh Muhammad Zakaria. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad Alaykum Zakaria. Salam, Welcome, Welcome to tonight's Allah. live show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, so, I'd like to start, without further ado, about the actual uprising mm. itself. Um, briefly, could you please perhaps you know elaborate on the context and the definition as it were mm. as a starting point for Imam Hussein al-Islam's uprising so and not, not indeed not. his holy companions definitely Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim well when we look at the Thawra when we look at the uprising or the inqilab the revolution of uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam what we're seeing is a revolution or an uprising steeped in the Qur'anic tradition. When we say that the Qur'anic tradition is one which advocates justice, which advocates equality and equity and servitude, not only to Allah Azawajal, but servitude for humanity as well, we see that the Imam's uprising was exemplifying these very issues. That was to bring about a reformation mm -hmm. within the Ummah of his grandfather. Because we understand that after the passing of Rasul al-A'zam, Islam had been taken over by certain political leaders who administered the Ummah in a particular way which took it away from the spiritual uh, dimensions mm -hmm. which the Rasul had so carefully laid down for it. Spiritual dimensions but also understanding that one has to live within the world as well. It was not only about the, the hereafter or the life to come, it was a reality of we understand the spiritual aspect and we understand the dunya aspect, the worldly aspect. So the Ummah had been taken away from this spiritual reality and the Imam Salawatullahi Alayhi rose to oppose this, rose to show us that those who are to administer the affairs of the Muslims have to have certain characteristics. And these characteristics are characteristics which the Quran constantly uh, spells out for mm -hmm. those who are to be in positions of authority. We see total corruption within the Ummah and the Imam comes to address this corruption. Corruption in the sense that it had seeped into every single aspect of community. Yes. Okay. So we call Islam a deen, a way of life. And as such, this corruption had entered into all aspects of the deen, all aspects of the way of life. Way of life. The Imam came to drive them away. You know, we have in Ayatul Kursi where Allah Azza wa speaks of, he is the wali of the believers. Yes. He takes them from the dhulamat into the nur. Mm -hmm. One way of doing this is via the rising of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, taking the believers out of the multitude of darknesses into the light. And inspired by the Imam's stance were his faithful companions, some his family members and some who were non-family members, but were wedded to the Muhammadi message mm -hmm. of reform, taqwa, justice, etc. So in brief, yeah. the Imam rose to bring about a reformation, reformation within the Ummah of his grandfather. Right. Um, if, I, if I may add, um, how do you see the youth in today's age translate, or how, does, how do you see the message of Imam Hussein al-Islam and his shahada and his great companions translated in today's day and age for the youth, specifically the youth. What lessons do you think they can take? What do you think they can actually integrate in their daily life 
mm. with regards to um, education, um, fa uh, married life, um, respect for people, and also, mm. and also the stance of not being diplomatic, mm. really rising up to the challenge mm. that if there is the Mm. If there is injustice, one must stand mm. up against it. How does how, how it, it's quite a it's an ocean. Abroad. It's an it's perhaps an ocean, but sure. let's skip into it. Yeah, yeah, inshallah. Um, the youth are able to feast on the message of the Imam, and when I say youth, both male and female. The message of the Imam is for both. Yes, as we say, the Sunnah of Rasul al Adam finds expression both in the male and the female. Likewise, the uprising of the Imam is for both male and female. With regard to the youth, if we see that one of the aspects which they can take is reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. Tawakkal. Tawakkal mm -hmm. Allah. And a reliance which is not a passive reliance. You know, yes. sometimes we say, Qadr Allah, it, it's Allah's will, so yes. it will happen. I rely on Allah Azza wa with regards to whatever comes. Okay, yes, we rely on Allah Azza wa with regards to whatever comes, but we have to be active as Absolutely. well. Yes. Okay, so within our daily lives as um, individuals, we are uh, confronted by a number of um, issues which may be very demanding, mm -hmm. may sap our energies, our spiritual energies and our physical energies. Yes. But the best reliance that we can take if we're young, you know, the youth, is to rely on Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah Azza wa Jal does not let down those who rely on Lion. Him. Yes. Okay? And He is there for everybody. Mm -hmm. With the youth, that should be their first port of call. Nobody else. Right. Everybody else will let them down. Yes. You know, parents will promise things yes. and they won't come through with it. Friends will promise things and they won't come through with it. Particularly those individuals, those youth who are finding it difficult at school, you know, they may be bullied. Yeah. They may see that they don't have anybody to turn to. Turn to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because we're told Allah Azza wa Jal does not give a test to anybody more than they can bear. Right. And the tests that we get are there to refine us, are there to develop us. So reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal, and when we have Allah uh, having our back as it, as it were, yeah, Allah's got your back, mm -hmm. as, as the saying goes, then we need nobody else. Right, okay. Um, if I can add, during the actual Great martyrdom, my mum was saying, Les and his holy companions. Mm. There are a number of exemplary figures. We have, of course, Imam Hussein Islam, his dear brother Abu Fadl al Abbas al Islam, who was, correct me if I'm wrong, only mm. 33 mm. Mm. when he was Shaheed. Yes. You have his 18 year old son, mm. Ali Akbar mm. al Islam, and also his infant brother, mm. Ali Azbar al Islam. Janabi Qasim al Islam, mm. briefly, Muhammad, Ani Muhammad, and yes. so on and so forth. Yes. There's a figure mm. representing almost every age group, mm. and also for the, the holy ladies. Definitely. Briefly, for the youth, what, aside from bravery, mm. what do you think they could actually take the youth today? Just from a couple mm. of brief points, from perhaps four or five of the personalities. You see, I've got. When we use the term bravery, we, I think we have to understand that bravery is not always martial. It's not always the physical bravery which um, shows itself. When we use the term bravery, some, sometimes we use it in a very limited sense that it is the clashing with other people or the standing up uh, against you know, oppression or somebody doing some wrong to one. But bravery shows itself in many different aspects. Yes. So for example, um, for the youth, let's say, being brave in going to a new school, that one is having to go to a new school or go to a new class and instead of staying at home and shying away from that responsibility, 
one embraces that responsibility and goes to the new school and encounters all that is to be had from that new school. That's an aspect of bravery. Mm, character building. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And there are other e examples which, which we can take from, uh, from that. But again, I'll come back to this tawakkul. If, for example, we see the Imam alayhi salam Islam, when he is kneeling prostrate on the ground and the mal'oon is standing over him ready to strike him, just like his father when he is struck, uh, when he is in sajda, the dhikr of Allah Azzawajal is being performed and they are satisfied with the with whatever Allah Azzawajal sends to them yes those individuals who go out on the battlefield those young boys their last words are words of praise of Allah Azzawajal gratitude to Allah the the ladies of the holy house the the princesses of Banu Hashim peace be upon them all they show this deep rooted reliance on Allah Azza wa Jalla no matter what takes place yes no matter what horrors they see they always have Allah Azza wa Jalla constantly as their rock to rely on for our young boys and our young girls whatever they go through whether it's in the immediate family whether it's at school or college or at university whether it's out on the street you know yes. the help is always there from Allah Everybody else will abandon us. Right. But if we are faithful to Allah Azawajal, Allah Azawajal will always stand with us. Mm -hmm. And then Allah Azawajal speaks of sending his malaika. Allah Azawajal and the angels are the believers' um, aiders. Yes. Um, what better aiders to have than Allah Azawajal and his blessed angels? Right. Um, the actual event of uh, Karbala falsely is focusing, not focusing, but falsely some people think it's just male oriented. What, what lessons can uh, our sisters, our girls learn, mm. as it were, from the message of Imam Sayyidina Islam and Karbala? I think you're right, Arthur, to say um, falsely, because yeah. in some instances what we have is a hijacking. I yeah. use this term, I know it's very you know, uh, emotive, but an, a hijacking of the commemoration of Ashura, of the events that took place in Karbala by males. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, yes, we have the idea of the hijab between men and women, so we see uh, men doing martam and we hear uh, the uh, noha etc yeah. you know being recited by men we don't need to go and see what women are doing okay? sure so sometimes it can be seen as you know, definitely male orientated but it's not and we see that the imam alayhi salam is constantly relying on two key individuals uh, at Karbala Okay, Zainab alayhi salam and his backbone, Abu Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. And the counsel which he gives to Zainab is instructive in, to say, in the sense of saying, this is the true position of women, not within Islam, within humanity itself. They are part and parcel of the leadership of humanity as well. Our young girl should take from it that they can reach the heights of perfection mm -hmm. in all aspects of their lives whether they choose to be uh, alhamdulillah mothers or housewives whether they choose to be doctors whether they choose to work in tescos yes yeah whether they choose to be carers whatever they do they can reach the heights of perfection and that task or that role which they do which they perform is actually ibadat and their their, their role model in this is Bibi Zainab alayhi salam that the Imam alayhi salam trusts something to her he trusts we could say the leadership of Islam yes yes while his son Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam is in a state of illness mm -hmm. 
the responsibility falls on the shoulders of Zainab alayhi yes. salam and she articulates herself as a true member of the uh, Ahlul Wahi right yeah the family of Wahi and we could say well she's that type of person I can't reach that no not at all Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't give us examples which we cannot replicate in our lives true yeah so for us our shura is about both the believing men and the believing women sacrificing urging the mm. believers onto jihad fi sabilillah could i just mention one more absolutely, thing absolutely absolutely we see it in the waqia karbala that the women are in a sense the fortress no doubt of the deen yeah this is where the energy the pulse of the deen resides one of the companions of the imam uh, his head is thrown his head is thrown uh, to uh, the camp of the imam yes the individual's mother comes out takes the head kisses it and throws, throws it, it back. back and what does she say we are the type of people that we don't take back what we have given in the path of Allah as a watcher. This is a woman. Yes. How many men mm. faced with that could exemplify such reliance on Allah as a watcher? Yeah. Absolutely. So Karbala, believing men and believing women. I'll come to um, the social aspects of uh, Karbala in a moment or two. Sure. But. Um, just wanted to ask you, what inspiration do you think our very young sisters and daughters could gain mm -hmm. from Ibi Sakina alayhi salam, to Imam Hussain alayhi salam? So, she died very young mm. in the prison yes. of Yazid, Lam but, um, you, you know, it's, it's uh, I think one should talk about what lessons even very young girls can learn. Sure. What, what, what would you highlight? Probably one or two key points. You see, we are, we are blessed in the sense that when we have children, our children, they attend the madrasa and in the madrasa or the Muharram workshop, the aunties are there. Yes. I mean, Allah has always blessed the aunties Inshallah. because it's via them the deen is carried on. Mm. And what the aunties, they do is they organize reenactments if you want to call it plays yes absolutely. of what happened at Karbala and our children learn through doing mm. and when they constantly hear about Bibi Sakina she can be in some instances a remote figure but when they act out what happened to her, her that's when it really I think comes to life right. for our children okay okay, okay. so when I know from my own personal experience when my daughter, Alhamdulillah, uh, is involved in these uh, plays, her mother tells her, you have to model yourself after this individual. And she asks, I hear her asking, well, how old was Bibi Sakina? She says, four, maybe five. Um, and what did she do? Yes. She stood up for herself. Was she hit? Yes, she was hit. But her tears were tears not of self-pity, but the rage of Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay? And she constantly showed that she was willing to sacrifice herself for Allah Azza wa Jal. That's what I constantly hear my wife saying to my daughter. And she's presenting Bibi Sakina alayhi salam as a living reality. Yes, yes. Not somebody out there in the distance no. but somebody who who is packaged in a particular manner which is accessible you know to young boys and also mm. to young girls as well we'll be going into a break in a few minutes but before i do i think one of the key questions that's come up is um this great tragedy that's commemorated every year um what do you think it's limited just to islam and muslims or do you what lessons do you think can it reflect 
or can it go beyond all sections of society and does it? Mm -hmm. Islam being dynamic, mm -hmm. according to the Jaffrey effect, um, you know, it's not stagnant, it's mm -hmm. evolving, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, due to, you know, consensus, ishtihad, maloja, teachings and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, what, how do you think we can promote this message to different sections? And if it is going out there, are we doing enough? Look how blessed the Shia Madhab is and the yeah. followers of the Ahlul Bayt and Nabuwa. That every single year we have this dhikr of Imam Hussein Sallallahu Alaihi And this constant reminder of our responsibilities, not only to ourselves, not only to wider society, but ultimately to Allah Azza wa Jal. However, unfortunately, in some instances, we localize it, that the Imam is for us. Right. Okay. When the Deen is the gift for humanity. Absolutely. And these individuals, they represent the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal for all humankind. Right. So, wherever we are, whether we're in England as we are now, in Australia, in Canada, mm -hmm. in other parts of the world, then we need to use a language which is understood by the locals. Mm. So they too can hear what took place at Karbala, yes. why the Imam alayhi salam stood, and we now relate it to their lived life experiences. Yes, yes. When we don't relate it to lived life experiences, it becomes something which is abstract, untangible. We need to relate it to lived life experiences and allow the local indigenous people and non-Muslims to benefit from it. Do you think we should have more interfaith discussions? Do you think we should talk about common figures in different faiths as well and relate their messages to the message of Imam Hussein? What sort of methods do All you think? All of the above. Yeah. All of the above, definitely. Um, I've I heard something with regards to interfaith discussion and people trying to pick out Imam Hussein figures in different faiths. Yeah, I think that's wrong. Okay. Okay. Um, people saying that you know uh, the Imam alayhi salam is like Krishna. Uh, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Etc. Um, I think that's wrong. The, the Imam is unique in his own unique setting. Mm. That doesn't mean to say we cannot see similarities, similarities in lived life experiences, in sacrifices and in messages from other faiths. So not only do we have to be able to, or willing to give it to other people, but we have to be willing to receive as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. We do have to be receptive Otherwise, it's just seen as being one-sided and dominance. Um, yeah. We have had, alhamdulillah, Muharram Majalis in churches. Mm, now, going against the popular narrative that Islam is alien to the country, and Muslims can't get along with other people, etc. Muharram Majlis, where the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal is done, and the mentioning of one of the great sacrifices of Islam, i.e. the Imam and his companions, within a church. Yes, yes. And this for me is interfaith dialogue Absolutely. at its most uh, clear and at its best. Um, Sheikh Mohammed Zakaria, we'll be going to a short break. Uh, sure. Viewers, uh, we'll be going to a short break and um, after the break, we'll be discussing this me uh, message of Imam Hussein Islam a little bit further. Please do feel free to call in. Telephone number is 0203 515 1234. Assalamu alaikum.